Rock, rock, town in the building. to be here this morning. Father, we are about to hear from you. Jehovah, speak to all the language you understand. Speak through me, O oh God. I present myself as a living sacrifice. Have your way. Take control. It's not about me. It's about your grace. It's about your Holy Spirit. It's about your compassion. Have your way. Take control. Your word, let it come with power, let it fill with understanding, and let it touch people's hearts. Father, let it correct every wrong. Father, let it make somebody to move on in life and move forward in life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is not enough for somebody to tell you it is well with you. Praise God. If somebody tells you it's well with you, there are other principles that have to be followed for it to be well with you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I know that as many of us are here, we have different things in mind. We know where it's touching us. I told them last Sunday in Brescia that a church is not a place where you come with problems. You also need problem. Hallelujah. A church is a place where you come with problem and you need solution. You need comfort. You need realization. Hallelujah. I can count how many times I've been to church. I will come with problem. But when I sit down in the house of God, I will just forget about everything. Praise God. Even when church closed, I will find the God to go back home. Why? Because I find comfort in church. I found realization. I found peace. I found word of encouragement. Hallelujah. That is what church is all about. It's not a pro it's not a place where you come with problem and you go back with another problem. Amen. Amen. God wants to speak to us this morning about how his word works. Amen. Come with me to the book of John chapter 1, chapter 5. John chapter 5. I read from 1. It's an incident that took place when Jesus Christ was passing by. Hallelujah. Are you there? Yes. John chapter 5, verse 1. I read. After this, there was a feast of Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool. Which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of important folks, of blind, horse, widowed, waiting for the move of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever the first after the trouble of the water stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Hallelujah. Of whatsoever disease, whatsoever problem, whatsoever co condition, even the broken heart, because I see something that they hurt. Hallelujah. Anytime you are opportune to step into that pool, Everything is automatically over. Hallelujah. And a certain man was there, which has an infirmity 38 years. Good 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step down before me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. This 
man, we will come back to this class, class 8 later. This man has been in that condition for good 38 years. For good 38 years, he was not thinking of anything. Rather, had to be healthy to be like other man. He was not thinking about building his house. He was not thinking about buying his car. He was not even thinking about job. He was not even thinking about anything. He was only thinking about one thing. And what is that? How to be healthy. When will God answer me? When will I be able to step into this room? For good 38 years. I know as you are sitting down here this morning, there is something that you have been expecting to happen in your life. Praise God. You have not been thinking of any other thing except that thing. God, when will you respond to me? God, when will you come to my aid? God, when will this thing happen in my life? Just like that man that has been at the pool of the cider. When will it happen? You are not thinking of any other thing. You see, when you see somebody that is in a desperate need, everything that is happening around him does not consign him or her. The only thing that consigns him or her, when will I be like this person? When will it be my son? This man has never one day expected something to happen to him. He has never bargained for it. In fact, the man believed in God. Praise God. Because if he did not believe in God, he will not be waiting for miracle to happen. Because he knows that the only source you get miracle is through God and through the angel of God that stepped into the pool to trouble the water. So he was not thinking of anything. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes, sir. For good 38 years. Sometimes I think about it. This person goes to church. This person serves God. This person helps people, praise God. And something before him, which he had never expected, which he had never prayed for, which she or she had never wished herself. And somehow, somehow, he or she finds herself in that problem, praise God. For so many years now. For so many years. As this man has been contemplating, why did this thing happen to me? I believe that is how you are contemplating God. Why I don't have God? Why I don't have job? That people that, or those people that have it, are better than me. Why I don't have my child? Why is it that there is no man coming to me and say, I love you? Amen. You have been in that situation for so long. And you have been contemplating, why is this thing happening to me? For some years now. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to read the scripture. Because sometimes we think we're going to go at length of accusing ourselves. Maybe it's because of my sin. Praise the Lord. That is why God don't want to change my circumstances. Or maybe God don't love me. How many of you have been in that ship? Praise God. You, you said, man, you begin to accuse yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, it's my sin. 
and every time when you pray, when you want to pray, the only thing that comes into your mind, God have mercy on God for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I want to show you something. Hallelujah. Come with me to the book of Psalm. Book of Psalm, chapter 145, verse 9. Psalm 145, verse 9. Please, I want you to follow me carefully because you can't live here the same way you come. Amen. Praise the Lord. The book of Psalm 145, verse 9. God is like you don't love me. That is why you don't want to answer me. In fact, I'll so seed. In fact, I've, I've, I've involved myself in one ministry or the other in the church. Maybe you don't love me. But in Psalm 145, verse 9, the Bible said the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his work. The Lord is good to all. So if you are thinking, why is it me? We see that God is not Lord. No. The Bible said, God is good to all. So if God is good to all, it simply means what he did for James, he will do for John. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, it is not that God don't love you. God loves you the way you love that person that has it. Amen. Amen. Now, okay, you say, okay, God loves you. So maybe it's because of my sin. In fact, my sin has been hindering my prayer. Because why would you know that uh, the prayer of a sinner it's an abomination unto God. Yes, Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, my sin is hindering my favor. My sin is making God not answer me. So, my sin is, is a blockage to my answer prayer. But I want to show you something. In the book of that same Psalm, 130, so let us know whether it is your sin that is hindering you. Psalm 130, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 130, verse 3. What did he say there? The Bible said, If thou blood should mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? So, if God regards iniquity, even that person that has what you have, is not qualified to have it. He said, if God regards iniquity, who shall stand? In another scripture, the Bible said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. <coughs> so if you are thinking that it's because of your sin that is making God not to give you that document, or not to give you that job, or not to give you that husband, or not to give you that wife, or not to give you that child, it is an error. In fact, that person that has it, his or her own sin is greater than your own. Do you know why? Because you that is looking for something is more closer to God than somebody that has that thing. Praise the Lord. Because every time you are in contact relationship with God, I don't know if you have if you have if you have been trusting God for something. Hallelujah. So if you are trusting God for something, you are always in contact relationship. In fact, if in Nigeria the, 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 the people used to mock some ladies that when they were doing Agabango, they don't come to church. But now that there is no man in their life, you see all of them in the church. I've never had something like that. Praise the Lord. So at that period they are in church, they are more closer than to God than somebody that has that husband they are looking for. So it is not your sin. It is not your sin that is hindering the blessing of God for you. Amen. 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 There is somebody that has committed abortion for so many times. 
Becky, how's the child? Hello. Praise the Lord. And Father, I have a friend. This way is making noise there. I have a friend in Nigeria when we were in school. He said me that he has gone with so many abortions he has committed. Praise God. But today he has three children. So, it is not about your sin. Amen. I know you may ask him now, Pastor, what is the problem? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know you may ask him, what is the problem then? It's not my sin. It's not that God don't love me. So what is it? Why is it that I don't have it? Even when I'm crying to God. Amen. Now let me show you something. Come with me. To the book of John chapter 1. Let me show you an, an incident that happened. Hallelujah. Are you there? John chapter 1, 9 verse 1. I read. And as Jesus passed by, I want you to take these words. Amen. I want you to take these words. John 9 verse 1. Please, follow me. Your life will change for you. Amen. That thing that you are thinking that is the problem, it's not the problem. Amen. Amen. That thing you are thinking that makes you not to have documents, it's not that. You have accused yourself for so long for wrong good purpose. Amen. Amen. John chapter 9, verse 1. I read. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind from birth. Are you there? Yes, sir. And his disciple asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. This is a righteous man. He has never committed any sin. In fact, he was born blind. You get some, you get back to somebody. In fact, indirectly, they are the, the, the disciples of Jesus Christ were trying to accuse God. Because this man, this man. He doesn't have a problem. So why is he blind? Is he in that sin now? Or his parents? Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus answered us. He said, Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. Hallelujah. It's not his sin. Neither the sins of his parents. But this happened to him. For the, for, for, for the work of God to be manifest in his life. So in other words, you are facing what you are facing today because God wants to manifest his work in you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That he just says. Because God loves you. It's not about my sin. So what is it? Hallelujah. Because God wants to manifest His work in you. God wants to manifest His work in me. So that is why I'm facing what I'm facing today. The Bible said, We are instruments of God. And he created us for his own glory. He created us for his own pleasure. You see, when you don't have a child, and suddenly you become pregnant, you celebrate the goodness of God more than someone that has been giving birth every three, three years. People will see you and say, wow, God is good. Amen. People will see you and say, God is good. But that person that has been given birth every three, three years, they'll say, ah, thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank God for safe delivery. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank God for safe delivery. But that person that don't have been for, for so many years, suddenly she gave birth, his case is 
something different. Yes. So, God wants to manifest his work in you. God wants to manifest his work. Meaning that there is a work that God does. He wants to manifest it. Because when he manifests it through you, it will draw more souls to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You have been waiting for that tonight for so long. And suddenly, suddenly you have it. We celebrate it more than someone that just got the commission and they give it to him. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But there is procedure. Ah, it didn't just happen. Amen. Amen. Because your case is a special case. Before God and humanity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a special case. It does not just fall down. It does not just happen. There is a word for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the question is, how will it manifest now? How will it manifest? Because they have been telling me, yes, you will, you, you, it shall be well with you. You will have your document, praise the Lord. You will have your child. You will, you, you, you will have your husband. And for so many years, I have been receiving that prayer. And I'm still where I am. I'm still the way I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. So what are the procedures? Let me show you Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Are you there? I want you to pay attention. Praise the Lord. That situation was cause of home. That situation was called an end. Praise God. Are you there? I'm not going to shout. I just want you to listen and take something home. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. The Bible said, Jesus said unto him, If thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. If thou can believe, all things are possible. To them that believe, there is something God is telling you concerning your situation. He said, If thou can believe, all things are possible. Now you look at yourself, ah, God is telling me to go and marry that old woman. Praise God. So, God, what are you talking about? It's not my time, it's not my class. I don't, sir. 